How does it go friends and welcome to or back to the channel. Now very quickly before we get into this week's episode, just want to give a shout out to the Blue Lamp Model Expo that's coming up in September. So if any of you guys are in the Midlands area or close uh, or relatively close to Birmingham, uh, the Blue Lamp, Blue Lamp Expo uh, is in Edgebaston in Birmingham. Um, Sunday the 17th of September, it's £4 for adults and 16 to go uh, free. Um, all the proceeds to this go, uh, well, so both of them will be split between uh, Models for Heroes and the West Midlands Police Benevolent Fund. Um, so hopefully you guys uh, will be able to attend if you can or in the area. I also will actually be uh, displaying uh, at the show, hopefully. Um, so yeah, if you're in a boat, you know, go down. It's a good day out. I did it a couple of years ago. It was uh, a great show and it was a good day out. Loads of guys, um, you know, displaying as well as uh, some vendors there as well. So we can spend our money on some goodies and tools and models and whatever. Anyway, so let's get in uh, to this week's video and it's finishing it off that what I class as a relatively boring T55. So like I said in the last episode, um, you know, I went down sort of this sort of post-apocalyptic type route, even though it wasn't necessarily where I was going. I was trying to go for more of the tank girl, kind of cartoony sort of um, way of it, but that didn't work out. So I went down this post-apocalyptic uh, route. Um, and to be fair, it's been fun. I've really been enjoying it. Um, I've really enjoyed actually finishing this model off um, as well, considering I wasn't really bothered about doing it um, in the first place anyway. Um, so yeah, so I've really enjoyed it. Um, in this video, like I said, we're going to get the model finished, do all the paintwork, and uh, actually going to add uh, a couple of figures uh, into it. So grab yourself a brew and a bicky, and uh, let's jump into it where we left off last time. Right then, so here's where we left the model last time already for paint. You all noticed then it wasn't mentioned, well you may notice there it wasn't mentioned in the previous video. The 40mm uh, grenade launcher uh, on the top there uh, wasn't mentioned. Uh, it's because afterwards I decided against it. Um, I don't know, it just wasn't quite feeling right for me um, there. So it got removed. Um, all together but as it is everything stays the same and we're ready to go to paint with some quite a wacky scheme I think for me uh, but you know these type of models um, it doesn't really matter what they look like so I actually found the scheme for this uh, for a Panzer 4 tank now I'm not actually sure if it's a proper scheme I doubt it being this loud uh, but it's this weird um, white red and black uh, scheme so what I've done is rather than going from an actual white, I sort of went for a bit of an off-white. I added a little bit of buff uh, to the white. And obviously you can see I've masked everything off and obviously started with the white first because that's going to be the you know worst colour to try and paint back over every other uh, dark colour. It was an absolute nightmare to mask because I'd put everything on, which normally I don't do. I'm quite departmental. Uh, so usually stuff like that is usually painted on. Uh, sorry, added on uh, last, uh, but I decided to try and hopefully make things easier, but it wasn't too bad. There was actually only a few areas that I actually needed to touch up, so it actually went together quite well. The main body I went for a little bit simpler which I think I saw actually on I believe it was an Indian version uh, of this tank which is simply red and black. Uh, the black actually is um, NATO black rather than going from an actual black because it would be a bit um, a little bit too harsh I think uh, using an actual black. I know it looks quite hefty black on this but it, in real life it's actually a little bit lighter. lighter. Um, I did actually tell a lie I actually did add a little bit of black to it just to um, slightly darken it because it was a little bit too grey. Also doing some chipping, obviously starting off with some sponge chipping as you saw and then added a little bit of hand chipping, also a little bit of dot to dot 
um, just to sort of emphasize some of the chips and obviously make some of them larger. For the chip color, I actually used a uh, dark brown with a tint of black just to darken it, just for the sort of uh, rusted sort of bare metal uh, of the armor itself. As we get to the lower hull, I was a bit more precise in some of the chippings and hitting the areas that are going to be most likely uh, scuffed. So stuff like on the these uh, extra fuel tanks, uh, hitting the edges uh, of that indentation there, and stuff like the corners uh, at the top uh, of the uh, glacier plates and uh, around the hatches. Again, mainly areas that are most likely going to get knocked because obviously they're going to be a bit sharper. And again, like round the hatches, which you're going to get uh, a lot of wear from crewmen getting in and out of the vehicle. This is also the same for around the engine deck, any hatches that would be opened and again, sharp edges um, and just sort of, you know, your general traffic areas uh, that you're going to be want to be looking at for chipping. Now I had done some chipping across this, uh, the makeshift armor uh, on the glacier and I don't know what it was, but it just wasn't working uh, for me. I didn't like the way it was. I think it was mainly the way it was drawing. It got a weird sort of uh, look to it. So what I decided to do was think a little bit more into, well, like I said, this is a makeshift bit of armor. So it's probably going to, you know, like fill upgrade. And it's probably not going to be in the best condition anyway. And it's probably not going to be painted either. So I decided to basically slap it all over the front uh, glacier um, rather than all this chipping. Unfortunately, this was a decision I made off camera. So you won't see me how I, see how I did uh, the front glacier. You'll see it in a second done, but you'll see a little bit later on in the video how I achieved that. Now, at this point, I'd realized the tracks needed a little bit more work. So I got my rotary tool out the drill bit and scuffed up all the pads now the pads on these would have been or these particular types would have been rubber so i was thinking well i'm thinking this thing's going to be been around for quite a while it's going to be a little bit more beaten up so why not take a few chunks out of it afterwards what i did was i got some tamarix extra thin uh, put them all across the tracks just to get rid of any really rough edges and smooth them out and again, give that sort of uh, rubber worn uh, sort of look about it. So obviously it wouldn't be overly harsh. It'd be kind of quite, uh, you know, soft and with the chunks being taken out, obviously the way rubber wears, you know, it's going to give a bit of a um, sort of a slightly softer kind of look to it. Once I was happy with that, I went straight into painting and around the tracks themselves, they're obviously going to, going to be metal. Uh, apart from obviously those rubber pads. So I've used Streaky Rust Effect from uh, Ammo uh, for this and just pretty much just slapped it all over. Uh, I then added a little bit of um, light rust from AK and sort of wet blended all those in. This should be the similar way I've done the glacier. Again, a little bit later on, you'll see better on how I did that. But mixing the two together while they're wet, once they dry, very similar to the front glacier there um, you know it gives a really nice um, you know very rusty looking effect while it was still wet I got a cotton bud and just rubbed the inner part of the track where the uh, road wheels would have run over um, mainly just to clear that out but also sort of given the effect um, of you know these being working tracks they obviously you know the filth and everything gets sort of like rubbed out but again this will be a little bit uh, clearer a little bit later on with the another effect um, but once the uh, enamel paint had dried I went in with uh, Tamiya rubber black to paint over the rubber uh, part of the track so for the storage I did some uh, just a little bit different so as you can see I've based them in a light grey colour and I kind of went with a little bit of a glazing effect so basically all I've done is just thin down some paint, basically. Um, did take a couple of coats, uh, but one of the best things about doing it sort of uh, this way is the paint sets um, into the recesses slightly a little bit darker after a couple of coats. And uh, yeah, it's kind of like a bit of a low effort paint. 
um, paint job. So I did this across all the storage. I also tried to make them um, uh, a little bit varied, so I tried to use a few uh, different colours. Um, some of them I even went over uh, either a couple of more times uh, than some of the other bits. Again, just to give a slight variation uh, in the paint, uh, rather than keeping everything all green because this is all sort of made up. So there was more green. I don't know why I just said that. There was more green. Uh, but again, just like using different shades, and I even added some brown ammo cases uh, in there as well. You see, it's a really thin paint. It does take a couple of coats, but you know it gives quite a good effect in the end. You see, the most of the paint layers up in the recesses, darken it all up. Now, as we move on to the barbecue, this was a little bit of a disaster. So, as you can see, I based it in a, a, a green colour. Did a uh, dark grey sort of chipping uh, over the top most heavy on the top because I'm giving it trying to give it this sort of burnt effect now I decided to try and use something a bit different I've used AK's uh, crusty rust deposits and I thought I'd use this first and then do my same as, as I did with everything else using uh, Ammo's streaky effects uh, which is the dark uh, sort of brown rust and then using AK's like rust and sort of trying again sort of mix it all in you know doing a bit of wet blending all over the areas that I want to sort of give the effect that you know the barbecue's been quite extensively used the paint sort of chipped away and you know you get that burnt rust look and unfortunately it really didn't work out whatever it did it sort of just looked this manky horrible colour so later on what I ended up doing, I did it off camera because it just it was just one of those things I couldn't quite get right. And again, it was just one of those things that also in the end just sort of fell into place and looked a bit right. Now, I'm not sure what it was. I mean, I've not used uh, the, uh, the rust deposit stuff before. I thought it'd give it a bit more of a grittier look. Um, maybe it's something I don't need to use in large quantities as I have uh, tried doing here. Um, maybe it's just more of like uh, just a few bits and bobs here and there. I don't know what it was. Um, I'm just gonna have to be. Um, I'm just gonna have to try and work at it, and um, you know, just try harder next time. But as you can see, in the end, you know, with a bit of fettling, um, actually kind of looks all right. It didn't really turn it the way I wanted it to, but I'm quite happy with the way this looks. Then it was the case of making the barbecue looked a bit more used. So what I've done is I've used some soot uh, pigment powder and just blatted that all through uh, the inside of it. Again, you know, given that sort of, you know, dirty, dusty sort of manky deposits that you get in uh, the barbie. Uh, I did also add uh, a few bits of white, again, trying to give uh, more of a kind of ashy uh, sort of uh, deposit look uh, within the barbecue. So next what I want to do is actually try and bring the barbecue to life. So I broke apart a flickering tea light candle, soldered two wires uh, to it. Now of course these are both bare because uh, I wanted to feed these through into the back of the tank without them being too noticeable because admittedly this was a bit of an afterthought. So one of them I will paint um, which will be actually does work as a kind of protective coating. So if it com comes into contact with anything else that it shouldn't be doing, um, that paint actually stops it from shorting out um, if it touches any of the wires. I've also got some uh, ground up bits of uh, charcoal, this is actual tar charcoal, um, all put into place uh, and then fixed together with a pigment fixer. Also I tried to make sure that I wasn't covering the light up too much because otherwise you would be able to see that little flickering flame. So now I can finally show you how I did that uh, makeshift glacier plate. So literally it's using the same rust tons as I used before. All it was done is just wet blending, again using the uh, MIG streaky effects and the light rust. Once it dries, it gives this lovely burnt uh, metal look and also do the same on the exhaust. Now as we move on to the side skirts, now I've tried to make these look like they're rubber. So the side skirts rather than being painted the same as the vehicle, um, I've painted them in uh, rubber black and put some chipping fluid uh, over this, sprayed the same red as I painted the tank, slightly off from the actual color, because again, 
I don't know, I just wanted to make it look slight variant because it's on a different material. I sort of thought it might, you know, the colour changes slightly. Um, but it says put some chipping fluid down. Um, using water, as you do with chipping fluid, empty it with a relatively stiff brush. And using something like a knife or um, a tooth prick, just to add some more scratches. And again, if you go over it with a brush, that will make those scratches uh, bigger and you know give you a different um, sort of chipping uh, effect now the next thing is I wanted to do was put the name on the side of the vehicle so I took a photo of the two side skirts and tried a couple of different fonts over the top seeing what I liked um, and you know what I thought might look quite good on the vehicle once I found the text I liked I saved it to my phone and then had the phone next to me and basically copied it uh, from the photo. So I've decided to try and do something a little bit different and something new. So I've tried to add some um, sort of natural debris uh, on the vehicle. I'm kind of imagining this in some sort of, sort of sandy uh, environment so I've got some relatively uh, fine sand that has actually got a few little pebbles in there and all I did was put this uh, down uh, loosely obviously as you in and then using some AK's sand and gravel fixer to fix it all into place so then to try and sort of blend it all in and add some extra effects uh, to this I've used uh, life colors um, diorama dirt dust series and um, for this one I've used a sort of like a, it's like a light brown colour um, this is the first time I've used this and it's also the first time I'm doing uh, with all this sort of accumulated dust um, I actually put down a clear coat and I think it was a bit too glossy for it it did actually say in the instructions which I kind of ignored uh, again because I haven't done this stuff or used it before um, does actually say pretty much use it on a on a matte surface um, so next time I will do that but I did have to put several layers on um, just to sort of start to sort of build some uh, opacity and you can see it has gone into those crevices and, and accumulated areas as you can see I've put it down onto the tracks as well and did the same as I did um, earlier on and I got a couple more body in there and cleaned up the area where the running gear um, obviously would wear away all that sand and dust uh, there so as you see cotton bud in there just to just to wipe it all off while it was still wet and it will give a little bit of a, a smidgen of dust uh, deposit in there but not too much again because like I said with the running tank all that stuff gets you know basically pushed uh, away and as well as you can see you know I'm having to put quite a lot um, on uh, the running gears you can see you know it's just it's too glossy so um, I did actually on the turret later on which you'll see um, that I actually was I think I actually put a bit of a matte uh, varnish over it just to dull that shine down a little bit but it says it in the end it, it worked out quite well you know we got the build-ups and deposits in the right areas So as you can see on the turret, actually, I think actually looks considerably better than what I've done previously. Um, I did do a bit of streaking uh, down the sides, obviously, because that makes sense. Because uh, obviously, you know, rain and whatever will obviously run down the sides of the tank. And on the top, I sort of left it in a bit more of a kind of puddledly fashion and, and around some of the rivets. Now, as we move on, I've used some uh, dark brown oil paint. Um, to put around uh, the hubs and, and around the, the running gear just again give the uh, impression of oil um, leaking out of the hubs and you know just it's just a little bit of an extra added effect and then now we can start putting things uh, together a bit more we're putting the side skirt on there and hiding the um, the tracks that I could not be bothered to to finish off Now, while I add some smoke effects to the engine deck and around the exhaust, I want to say a massive thank you to Barney Mins and John Alex Scale Models for becoming channel members. 
support is massively appreciated and if you guys would like to support further there are links in the description down below now after adding those smoke effects i've gone in with some more soot just again add a little bit more uh, deposit the smoke itself is a little bit glossy which i didn't mind too much just adds a little bit more there uh, but the the soot you know just dulls it dulls most of it down and just again like i says adds a more of a deposit uh, around these areas now i also wanted to mention before going through the whole weathering stud i actually already added the storage so it all tied in really well the last thing i wanted to add because i didn't want to knock it because i'd broken this several times with this little aerial that was attached uh, or attached to a little uh, radio i know it's technically a tv aerial but this is all in the land of make believe so it doesn't really matter and i just wanted something a little bit kind of like funny just to sort of like really stand out but these were all super glued into place now it wasn't really the intention of actually adding figures to this model but i decided to in the end um, so i had a couple of spare figures and i had a few spare parts given to me uh, from a friend so the figure sitting down um, was from an LRDG kit that I had. Um, the bloke standing up was a few random bits again from a friend as well as his little hat. Um, also added some tongs uh, into his hand, which was just a bit of uh, metal wire, which I just hammered out flat and sort of shaped and glued into place. The cigarette uh, on both figures uh, is again, just a small bit of wire um that i just drilled a small hole into the hands just to stick those in and a couple of beer bottles from uh mini arts uh beer bottle wine um set <laughs> then all that was really left to do was to super glue the figures in uh, to the right places that I wanted them. So obviously you've got the uh, um, Jim here with his little chair uh, tending to the barbecue and Rod, I'm just making these names off the top of my head now. Uh, Rod is there um, just, I don't know, waffling some waffle um, and the, you know, they're all having a good time and having a few beers. And I thought by setting the scene was just adding a few extra bottles um, that the, the guys have gone through while having uh, a nice couple of burgers. So my friends, it's nearly time to show you the finished model. But before that, I just want to remind you guys, if you're in the Midlands area, um, there's the Blue Lamp Expo uh, model show. It's a great show. Uh, did it a couple of years ago, as I said before. Um, it's a good day out. There's loads of exhibitors and vendors uh, as well. I will also be there, so if you want to come and say hello and have a chat, that would be great. It'd be nice to meet you guys. Again, a massive thanks to the channel members and people that have supported the channel. It's mostly, muchly uh, appreciated. Um, again, thanks ever so much for that. Um, also, if you're new around here and you have enjoyed this video, it is a very different video from what I usually do. Um, but if you have enjoyed, consider watching some of the videos at the end of this one. Um, also, consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Again, would also be mostly appreciate muchly appreciated sorry um so yeah thanks ever so much for watching uh, again do hope you have enjoyed and um here's the finished model